So you want to learn how to create this crazy disappearance effect inside of After Effects without any paid plugins, it's a really solid transition and a great one to use to spice up your videos. But before I break it down, I just want to let you guys know that I'm Lurking Visuals and I run the State Creative Store, where we got presets and assets that will help you elevate your visuals, but let's get right into this tutorial. So I'm in After Effects right now and I got this Kenny music video right here. It's a static shot as you can see and the camera zooms out a little bit. What I'll start off by doing with this clip is rotoscoping out my subject. So I'll select my layer and start rotoscoping him out. And for an effect like this, I would really recommend that you use a static shot. Just because with my experience, it looks a lot better with the static shots compared to like moving shots when you're trying to create a content where fill, which is what we'll do in a second. So I just messed up my subject and it looks like this right now. But what we want to do now is we want to invert this. So let's go right up to our rotor brush settings right here and press invert foreground slash background. And just like that, our subject is gone. So I'll press this transparency button right here so I can see through it and I'll duplicate my layer so I'll have two of these layers and I don't want the top one to be inverted so I'll redo that and have my subject back and I'll hide the top layer so I just got this transparency right here and then I'll open up the content aware field tab right here and then I'll just set my work area by going to the end of my scene right here and then press N on my keyboard just like that so now i got my work area set and these are the settings that i usually go for i never change my content aware fill settings because these just work well so i'll press generate fill layer and make sure that your range is set to your work area and oh yeah i gotta save my shit first hold on i'm kind of retarded okay so we're in may and it's week three right now because it's monday so my content aware fill just finished and it looks like this right now which is pretty solid actually and i can't complain it looks good so what you got to do next is put your subject layer on top of the content of where fill so as you can see we got your subject back in place and it looks basically normal so i'll keep my subject in frame for like a couple of frames to right here then i'll select this rectangle tool and then i'll create a mask that looks like this just around my subject and let's press m on our keyboard so we can see our mask settings down here and let's press the time stop right here to create a keyframe and then i'll go like one second in or something like that to right around here and then i'll select the top parts of my mask and just pull it straight down like this and now our subject is completely gone so after doing that it looks like this and that looks pretty shitty to be honest we need to spice it up by turning on the motion blur first off if you want a feather on your mask then just press m on your keyboard twice and i can see your mask settings and you can just simply turn up the feather by just bumping it up. So I got my feather looking like this. It's pretty subtle. It's not too much. You can turn it up even more if you feel like it. But I'll keep it around 89. And then I'll select both of my keyframes. Easy ease them by pressing F9. And let's head to the speed graph right here. And I'll create something like this maybe. So now the effect looks like this. So he just basically disappears. So you can spice this up by adding on like various different effects, but I'll create a new adjustment layer and I'll add on a transform effect to this adjustment layer and then keyframe the scale, go in like to right here to when your subject is completely gone and then just turn up the scale to like 120 to create this kind of zoom effect. And we can actually move our anchor point down a little bit to like right around here I copy the anchor point to the position as well. So now we recentered it. So now this zoom effect will go down basically. I hope you get what I mean, but we'll get a slightly different zoom. Let's work with our keyframes a little bit. So easy is both of our keyframes. Open up the graph editor, of course, and go to the value graph and I'll create something like this. Uh, maybe a little bit later, like right around here. All right, so we got a smooth effect going on right now, but I want to spice it up a lot more. So what we got right here is pretty boring in my opinion and that is exactly why I got this other scene right here. So I can have my subject like be in the frame, disappear like that and then I'll have some crazy effects like some glitches or some flashes something like that. And then he'll pop right back in here and then we'll switch to the other scene. So that's basically what I'm going for. So let's mask out our subject once again. I'll probably speed this part up because it's pretty boring. So let's just mask him out. Alright so my subject is masked out now. So I'll just move him in like right around here so now my subject can pop right back in in this scene right here and then i'll remove all of the other scenes right here and then duplicate this layer and have my background layer back just like this and i'll have a flash go on right here because obviously the background changes and it's a slight zoom and i'll probably have some kind of glitch as well so i'll create a new adjustment layer just so we can spice this up so like right here when my subject disappears 
I'll add on some kind of glitch. So I'll open up user presets and in my ultimate VFX kit I got a bunch of different effects. So like I said I'm going for some kind of glitch effect and I got this starter frames effect in here. And this one is really cool in my opinion. It looks like this if I play through. That one is sick but I don't think that it really fits this scene. So I'll go for something else. Let's see what we got in here. We got a jitter glitch or this intense glitch. I'll try out both. So that glitch effect looks like this. Which is cool, but I still I feel like it's a little bit too much. So I'll try out something else. So this one looks like this. And I mean, that's a little bit better. It's not as intense. It's more subtle, so I feel like it looks a lot better. And then for right here, like I said, I want to have a flash transition. So let's create a new adjustment layer. And this time I won't use any presets. But like I said, the ultimate VFX kit will be linked in the description. So if you want to save time while editing, make sure to check it out. And I mean, the feedback that I got on it, it's crazy. It's just a really efficient kit. I wouldn't sell it if I didn't think it was efficient. But let's create some keyframes here for the exposure effects. We can have a flash going on. I'll go from zero down to one with one frame in between and then back to zero and then up to like two something maybe three something like this so it's a really intense flash right there when the background comes back in i'll go for a really intense flash up to four and then back to zero so it looks like this right now so i think it's a really solid effect and it looks pretty good we could also add in a shake right here if you feel like spicing it up a little bit and i'll go for a subtle shake from my ultimate shake pack and the subtle shake 2 is probably my favorite one so I'll create a new adjustment layer for that one and I'll put it underneath the flash right here and then just simply drag it on and then just mess with the keyframes, drag them in a little bit so we can have a pretty short shake. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If you feel like the shake was a little bit too much, then you don't have to overdo it with the shake. You could just simply forget that one. But I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something new. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also follow my IG because I'm a lot more active on there dropping a lot of sauce. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.